Uh, so great to connect with each and every one of you here today in this live masterclass all on collagen. This is a Q&A session and I'm going to be dropping some recent research actually that I've come across on actually how much collagen should we be consuming daily based on the research data. So I'm excited to share that with you. So let me know in the chat. Love to open this up here right now. What are your questions about collagen? Do you have questions about how much collagen to take? Which forms of collagen to be internalizing are the best quality? And also for at home and in clinic, how do we create more collagen? And I will kick things off here with inviting each and every one of you to let me know where you're joining from and what your questions are for collagen. That's what's so fun about these live masterclasses when you join me is you get to ask me questions. It's sort of like office hours. And I received feedback from a number of you that you would love to hear more solo episodes on the podcast. And that is coming to you, not to worry, more live solo lessons where I'm gonna be sharing just lots of information. So let me know what questions you have about collagen in the chat while I take a sip on my coffee with 13 grams of protein and 10 grams of collagen. What a smart way to start our day. With coffee, putting a scoop of collagen and a scoop of protein so that you're getting that initial collagen and protein blast right out of the gate when you start your day. And I love this because when it comes to how much collagen should we be consuming, collagen isn't the only nutrient we need to be thinking about. We also need to be thinking about antioxidants. We need to be thinking about protein. We need to be thinking about omegas and other key nutrients and vitamins that are supportive of all of our skin's cellular function. So I'm sipping on my collagen and protein in my coffee. And then I'm also sipping on hot water, lemon, and honey. Now, why do you also think that I have lots of lemon throughout the day? What does lemon help us with in regards to nutrients? Lemon actually helps to neutralize and reduce the amount of oxalic acid in our body. I had a lot of fun writing this recent research article for a UK medical journal, the Journal of Aesthetic Nursing. I've written for them before. And they reached back out and said, hey, Rachel, we'd love for you to write another article for our journal. And I'm also on the board of another journal and submit regularly to that one in the USA as well. So I get to peer review literature even before it's published. That's part of my role as being on the board of a journal. And what's really cool about the paper that I recently wrote is I actually referenced one of those articles that I peer reviewed because it was on collagen and I thought it was so incredible. And I love to see my fellow colleagues also writing papers on things that are related to skin and nutrition simply because I find that the nutrition side of things for healthy skin and longevity and slowing aging and feeling and looking our best, it's sort of overlooked. And most of the emphasis is put into skincare products and rejuvenation procedures. However, nutrients and anti-nutrient foods are something to definitely be aware of and making sure that we are hitting the mark for our daily nutrient needs. And the daily recommended allowances and the international food guides really kind of fall flat in my opinion and are terribly outdated. So this paper I wrote is going to be open source so anyone can read it, but I'm going to highlight that paper in another masterclass. I'll actually do a walkthrough and I have a few other articles I want to do a walkthrough on too. But in today's class, we're going to be focusing on collagen. Okay, so we have some great questions on collagen here. Hello, Jennifer. Is collagen good for everyone? This is actually the one time I will say that collagen is good for everyone. Now there's a nuance here, which source of collagen. So to give you a background of why vegans and vegetarians typically actually 
I hate to say this, but in my clinical practice and experience with working with patients since 2011, I have definitely noticed that those who follow a vegan or vegetarian based diet, they often have thinner skin and they often show signs of aging faster and they have a grayish hue to their skin. Now, why is this? Well, number one, perhaps they're not meeting their daily nutrient needs and they're not getting collagen because collagen comes from an animal source, actually typically comes from the skin or bone marrow of an animal. And glucosamine is something different that comes from crushed, crushed up crustaceans. And that's also good to have for your joints. But basically, I think collagen is good for everyone. And that is a blanket statement that I am comfortable saying because collagen is utilized in our soft tissue, our bones, our joints, and our muscle. And this whole concept of essential amino acids and amino acids, we need to get these essential amino acids from our diet. Basically, when we're consuming a peptide or an amino acid, we're getting lots of carbons and nitrogens and all these other atoms that then get broken down to create other cells and are important in, say, replication of our DNA. So we do need to have the appropriate amount of amino acids in our diet and these peptides in our diet so that they can be broken down and used for other functions throughout the body. Collagen is good for everybody. However, what I will say is in my research, what I, what I basically found to be a conclusion was that in the research, they looked at primarily marine collagen sources, which comes from fish. And typically that's going to be farmed fish. And the data does suggest that marine collagen does provide skin benefits. And I'm going to get into the dosing that's published in the paper. And the reason I like to write papers is so that I can actually speak to things. I can't just ask someone online, talk about things that I don't reference data from because that's not appropriate because I'm a practitioner. I'm not a influencer. I can't just speak on, you know, something I heard on an Instagram reel and then repeat it. I have to make sure that it's validated through a published academic source. Now, I think that the best sources of collagen, well, first of all, they can come from pork. So pork skin, for example, so like pork rinds. Actually, I will say that if you can get a really good source of pork rinds as a snack, that's a very high source of protein and collagen as a snack and very low, low in carbohydrates. And actually on Vancouver Island, where I'm born and raised, I'm a fourth generation Vancouver Islander. And yes, I am back here on the island. I did miss, I do miss South Florida. I was a bit of a snowbird last year, went to a ton of conferences, learned so much, but it's time for me to be back home with my friends and family and focus on some clinical things in my career as well. Because as many of you know, I do in clinic rejuvenation. I teach, doc teach doctors and nurses and just had some incredible opportunities open up for me back home. And everyone's happy to have me home and it's great to be home. So pork rinds are actually a really good snack to get collagen. However, in the USA, most pork farms are actually owned by international companies because it's actually cheaper for them to produce here in the States compared to overseas. So there are some issues with the sources of pork. So I'm very grateful here on the island. I'm actually in farmland. I'm on a 20 acre farm right now, looking at a, a beautiful lake and there's so many farms here. So I can find my local butcher, no problem access eggs that was raised on you know my neighbor's property that were given kitchen scraps and there's really good farming practices here on the island but that's not the case and actually if you want the source of the pork rinds that i'm talking about i will share that i'll probably end up sharing it on my favorites page because it's such a great product and it's a really lovely way to get like a salty savory crunchy snack throughout the day that isn't a carbohydrate or very low on carbohydrates and really high in protein and collagen. So we have pork as a source, then we have marine or fish as a source, it comes from the skin of the fish. And then for chicken, same thing, skin from the chickens and then also beef. And you can get collagen actually from the bones of animals as well. So this is why vegans and vegetarians typically don't get enough collagen in their diet because they're not having any animal products. 
And collagen is really important also for your digestion, for your gut. So you've probably heard of something like bone broth. You can actually, you know, whatever beef or chicken you've just eaten, boil down the bones, and then you get this beautiful glycine. It's that oily part. And bone broth is just incredible for for the gut and just great to drink on. And I like to actually have it before bed because the glycine makes me feel really good. So I do think collagen is good for everybody. However, the, the sources that have been the most studied are actually from marine collagen. And get this, in a, one study did 10 gram a day study, and they noticed about 30 to 35% skin improvements. So laxity, fine lines and wrinkles in a couple of weeks. This is pretty significant. And this was actually tested and analyzed and quantified through specific type of photography. It's very, very cool that we now have an appropriate amount of just how much collagen we have. Then I found another study that looked at 12 grams of collagen. I don't think you can really overdo it with the collagen. So if you're hovering between 10 and 12 grams of collagen a day, I think that's fantastic. I would argue that beef collagen source might be the best unless it's from a really good company that actually cares where the marine collagen is coming from which I do actually uh, can recommend Organifi makes a great collagen that's actually what's in my coffee here that is a marine source but I do trust Organifi as a company to source clean ingredients and their products are also glyphosate free which means it's uh, pesticide residue free, which is great. So that Organifi collagen, use code Varga, get 20% off that as well as their superfoods. Another episode coming on superfoods and nutrients a little later. But then I also really like the idea of a grass fed beef collagen source. And one could argue that because of the demand that there is from people like us to have sustainably raised and farmed animal products, that there is more of a demand for grass-fed, pasture-raised, grass-finished beef products. And I actually do sell a fantastic collagen. This is actually the one collagen that when I take it, I really notice a difference in my skin. And it is a grass-fed beef protein or collagen source. Well, collagen protein, same thing. Collagen peptides. They're all kind of synonymous, if you will. Now, with that one, that's called the Golden Elixir. You're going to find that on my skin shop. It has a few other nutrients added as well, including turmeric and some other things. And I really like to have it hot. It tastes like a golden latte. So that's actually a great option if you're really wanting to have more of a beef collagen source from a really great company. It's actually made by Metagenics. Metagenics and Thorn are arguably the two best supplement manufacturers in the world. They've been producing supplements for over 30 years and are third-party independent lab tested, which matters. And just a tip here, I really don't want you buying things like collagen for the most part from Costco or CVS and heaven forbid Amazon or eBay. Now, the reason why I never want you to buy anything that goes on or in your body from Amazon or eBay is because of the issue with counterfeit products. Companies will look at other companies that are successful and have a great brand and actually fake their product. Similarly to how you can buy a fake Louis Vuitton handbag. It looks the same, but it's at a bit of a lower price or it's actually more expensive and at the same price and you got a dupe. This is happening so frequently in the skincare, the makeup, the hair care, and also the nutraceutical or supplement space. So please do not buy anything that's going on or in your body from these third-party auction websites. It's really important that you get them from an approved distributor, which I am for about 20 different companies. And I've worked with these companies for a lot of them since actually 2011 and third-party independent lab tested and all that. So collagen is good for everyone. And in the data, it looks at marine collagen, 10 to 12 grams a day. However, I would argue that a beef collagen source is likely going to be the best in regards to the agricultural practices that were performed to actually raise that animal. 
The other thing I discovered in my paper, which kind of made me feel like a little bit of a conspiracy theorist, because we've all heard, you know, GM, non-GMO, it's really important to eat organic and eat non-GMO food, which it is. But some of the things that I discovered that are taking place in our agricultural practices for plants and also the livestock practices, basically, how do we make a crop grow faster and yield more? Or how do we make that livestock grow faster and be bigger and fatter? So there's so much that's happening in the agriculture space to actually manipulate food. This is not a conspiracy theory. And the different forms of genetic manipulation is actually a little disturbing when I actually came across the research. So what's what's happening with these practices, these agricultural practices, is they're actually making our foods more anti-nutrient. So this is a really interesting word that I'm seeing more and more people talking about. Maybe back in the day, kale was actually okay for us. And different types of greens and plants and collard greens and nightshades, maybe back in the day, they actually were okay for us. But now I would argue that because of the agricultural practices and soil quality depletion, they're really high in oxalates and phytic acid, which actually robs your body from nutrients. So just a quick tip for greens, I stick with for the most part, organic, romaine, and arugula. I don't have spinach. I don't have kale or uh, nightshades. I'll primarily stick with iceberg lettuce, romaine, and arugula and a local organic source. So if you're like, oh, what the heck can I eat now? <laughs> That's kind of one of the things that, that comes up. So you really do need to actually supplement your diet these days because our food quality just isn't what it used to be for our parents and grandparents. And the reason why I think this is so important to highlight the importance of supplementation for healthy skin and making sure we're getting enough things like collagen is because, yes, we're living longer, but the rate of deaths from autoimmune diseases continues to double year over year. And in 2022, about 18,000 Canadians died from complications from having an autoimmune disease. And in 2019, it was about 9,000. And then for the five years before that, it was at about hovering at about 4,000 steady. So there's things going on in our environment that are resulting in more inflammation and accelerated aging and the increased incidences of things like autoimmune conditions. So if you suffer from eczema or psoriasis, that would be considered an autoimmune condition. And most of them actually start from a nutrient deficiency left unchecked, which then leads to downstream inflammation. So let me know if I've sort of summarized that succinctly, because sometimes it can be a little bit challenging for me to get out of my clinician researcher brain and actually relay this information effectively. It's something that I'm constantly learning to relay this information at a level that you really are going to be able to understand and conceptualize. So I would love your feedback on that. So yes, collagen is good for everybody. Lisa, I heard if you drink too much lemon, it will harm your teeth. Lemon is acidic. It's a citric acid. I'm going to actually share something that I do that's kind of funny. I'm actually a, a, a trained sommelier, WSET level one. So not like a full psalm that you'd see in a restaurant, but I'm sure I could take a restaurant job and be sort of like an entry level sommelier. Um, one of the things I learned about drinking, because I've always loved having white teeth, is I actually never swish. This is going to sound really funny. I actually never swish anything I'm drinking to my front teeth. So when I drink, I actually have a bypass, <clears throat> excuse me, bypass my front teeth and go actually straight to my tongue and then I swallow it. And traditionally in the wine space, you know, you're swishing your wine over the front of your teeth and throughout your whole mouth to get the mouth feel and the flavors and, you know, detect tannins and all sorts of things. But that's actually something I do. So I'll actually always, um, don't let any liquids that I'm drinking get on the front of my teeth and my teeth are always white. And I would say that that is something that's been helpful, but don't use straws. Straws will do that, but please, please, please do not drink with straws because they're actually going to create a pursing 
of your lips and actually accelerate your lip aging. Hey, Deborah, great to see you looking fabulous. So yes, too much, too much of anything could be harmful for you, but I really don't think that you could OD on collagen. I mean, you'd have to be having just copious amounts of collagen. I think that would actually get like too expensive. <laughs> And that would be why you would stop actually having so much collagen in a day because you'd just be going through your collagen powder so quickly. So I really do think that lemon is helpful to have throughout the day. Actually, when I did some of my biome testing, when we're talking about foods and how much we should be eating and what foods we should be consuming, that's why I actually really like to test instead of guess what I eat. That's why you won't hear me talk about this, you know, blanket skin diet, because it really depends on what your body's nutrient needs are at that given time. And this is the study of something called epigenetics. It's actually looking at in your gut what your body needs and how things are being expressed in your gut from your DNA. So the epigenetics is something that's really important for us to be aware of what's going on in the body and how can we create more balance. So testing instead of guessing for you, your nutritional needs is really, really important. And I think the most strategic thing that you could do. So you can actually get that biohacking test kit on my website at the school of radiance.com forward slash biohacking. I'll put that in the chat here. And this is where you're actually going to find the Organifi products and lots of different things that I use daily that I strongly recommend and encourage and can get behind. I don't just talk about anything here on masterclasses, the show, one on one skin tutorials, membership. I really do my due diligence. What's the research behind this kind of stuff, right? So consuming lemon throughout the day, I think is really great to cut down the oxalic acids. I'm going to do a whole deep dive on another lesson on nutrient foods and anti-nutrient foods and what we can do to reduce our exposure to oxalic acid and phytic acid, which lead to inflammation. And Karen, are you concerned about oxalates in bone broth? Karen, I love that you're asking this question. I would say that it's pretty, I love that we're going here. I would say that it's pretty much unavoidable that to be exposed to things like oxalates and phytic acid in our daily lives, which is why I kind of take that precaution of literally drinking purified reverse osmosis structured water boiled in a glass kettle with organic lemon juice. I actually don't uh, put the, the rind of the lemon in my, my drink because the rinds really hold on to a lot of things, even if they're organic. And then a teaspoon of local honey. And sometimes I'll even put a little bit of the real salt. It comes from a salt mine in Utah. Really great product to get additional minerals. And I really do think that having more lemon and citrus in our diets is good for me because when I did my biome test, it actually told me to have more, more citrus in, in my diet. So this is a really great way for me to get that. And then it's just going to be helping to reduce the impact of oxalates uh, throughout your body. So say for example, you're making a bone broth and you you know, goodness forbid had kale in there, could the, the citric acid and lemon potentially cut that oxalic acid? Potentially, uh, but just don't use kale. <laughs> All right, Rachel, hello. We have a Rachel here, a fellow a practitioner, Rachel Wilkins. Great to have you here, who's also in the nutrition space. So keep these questions coming. That's the whole benefit of joining me live here is you get, honestly, ask me anything. And, you know, I always have things prepared that I want to talk about, but this is a really fun way for us to engage together as a community and me to answer your questions. Rachel, do you need vitamin C to absorb collagen? This is a really great question because actually we need all sorts of different vitamins and nutrients and cofactors to actually, yes, absorb things and yes, perform various metabolic functions. If we're low on, say, things like vitamin E, vitamin C, vitamin A, as well as zinc, iron, magnesium, manganese, and other nutrients and 
vitamins. Vitamins actually, what they do is they support cellular function. And if we're deficient in vitamins, you're not going to say get great absorption because your cells and your metabolism don't have the things that they need to actually do their job. So yes, I would argue, I don't know the specific pathway from the, um, from the biochemistry perspective of vitamin C and collagen, but I would say, yes, you do need to have sufficient amounts of these nutrients in order to absorb the different nutrients that you're eating. So basically the concept of having too many anti-nutrients in your diet, like oxalates and phytic acid high foods, they are going to rob your body of nutrients. And so many healthy recipes that I see online these days, you know, they're, they're putting in all these different foods that are actually anti-nutrient foods. So it's great to get ideas on how to cook and different recipes. However, when you get that Viome test kit done, it's like two to three hundred dollars it will actually give you a very specific readout of which foods you should be eating so that you aren't eating anti-nutrient foods or you aren't eating foods that are going to be inflammatory for your body and your needs keep these questions coming ladies and gentlemen hello 134 great to have you here let me know who that is and angie deborah jennifer karen lisa Merja, very beautiful name. I hope I said your name right. Naomi, Neka, Rachel, Tamara, and Teresa. Let me know the questions that you have on collagen if you have any more questions. If not, basically to summarize, you want to consume about 10 to 12 grams of collagen a day, and you should start to see those physical results in a couple of weeks. And the most researched sources for collagen and skin improvements are marine. And then I would argue that a uh, beef collagen source, like the golden elixir on my skin shop, that is going to be actually, you know, one of the better ones because it is a grass fed beef collagen. And when I did my vial testing, it actually specifically told me that I do really well with chicken collagen, so chicken bone broth and beef bone broth. However, it's easier for me to get access to really clean beef, and it's a little more difficult for me to get access to really clean chickens. Ooh, I love that hot water and lemon, it's so good. Okay, if we don't have any more questions on consuming collagen, what I'd like to do is segue into how do we actually promote more collagen? And I really wanted to lay the foundation of making sure that you're consuming enough collagen because if you decide to invest in things like dermal rolling and like in clinic laser skin rejuvenation to promote collagen, you absolutely need to have these collagen constituents. So with the purpose, the whole principle of say at home dermal rolling, which has been done since the 90s, you're going to go online and see lots of different people saying that at home dermal rolling, microneedling is bad for you, you can get infections and all sorts of things. Yeah, you can. If you're using a really low quality roller that's full of different heavy metals and alloys made from China. And yeah, you can have issues if you don't clean your roller properly and you aren't using the right serums. Absolutely. And yes, you can have problems if you're not first laying the foundation of your cleanser, moisturizer, sunscreen, scrub to balance and stabilize the skin barrier first, then get your skin used to the different actives like copper peptide, lactic acid, hyaluronic acid, vitamin C, for example. You, you need to stabilize your skin first for a couple weeks, then start to introduce those serums with those different actives and peptides about two nights a week for two weeks, and then dermal roll. You don't just want to buy a dermal roller and hope for the best, hope that it's going to be, you know, that magic wand situation. You really have to lay the foundations first because if you go straight into dermal rolling, straight into retinol, straight into vitamin C's and other serums, you, you definitely can get some skin irritation. However, when you follow the right protocols and practices, you're going to actually even the next day after doing dermal rolling, notice that your skin actually looks a little bit plumper 
And I always notice that after I dermal roll. And I've been dermal rolling my skin now since about 2011. And so I really wanted to clarify that because dermal rolling is a decades old practice. It's very cost effective and you can do it at home to stimulate your own collagen, reduce pore size, reduce fine lines, reduce pigmentation, and you can safely do it to the face, eyelids, lips, neck, chest, hands, inner arms, scalp, over C-section scar, above the knees. You just need the right product, the right roller, and then the right serums and the right know-how and technique. And actually what I will say, is every time I've gone online, whether it's social media or YouTube, and actually have seen other practitioners show how to dribble roll, I cringe. And I'm very lucky, and so are all of you, that I actually learned about dermal rolling from the physician who actually wrote basically the Bible on dermal rolling, Dr. Lance Setterfield. I actually learned from him and his research team. When I started in the clinic, uh, when I first started my clinical practice in med aesthetic medicine in 2011, and I saw all these patients that I took over basically essentially in the practice that had been doing dermal rolling for years and no question, they had the best skin. So to access my tutorial on how to dermal roll and how to basically in seven weeks transform your skin, that's in my seasonal skincare tutorials. So if you've had a one-on-one, -on -one, for the customized routine recommendations. There's some new names in here who I haven't yet met with. Start there, book your one-on-one -on -one, and use code masterclass15 or just send me an email info at theschoolofradiance.com is how you can directly connect with me and send me a note and I can give you recommendations. One-on-one, -on -one, then my skincare tutorials to actually learn how to use your products effectively and start with the basics with applying your products AM and PM and then, of course, we talk more about skin cycling with retinols, peels, and serums, <laughs> and then dermal rolling and other advanced protocols. So that's the only place I teach that. I'm not about to do tutorials and demos on YouTube for Bill, Bob, Doug, and Sally <laughs> to then use the wrong products and have issues. So I do that for a liability thing, too, actually. So the only way you get the dermal rolling demo is in my professional tutorials and you're warmly invited to register now. So at home dermal rolling is a great way to stimulate collagen. Retinols have also been shown to speed up cell turnover and it is also a potent antioxidant. So does retinol increase collagen? If it's helping with cell turnover and it's an antioxidant, it's going to be conducive to setting the stage for more collagen in the skin. And just an update here, the intense corrective vitamin serum that for many years I've recommended alongside dermal rolling, I can't get it anymore. The manufacturer is actually, there's some, it's, it's been on back order since December. And it's very unfortunate because it was a really clean retinol, but there's lots of other retinols as well that I can recommend with dermal rolling. So I'll be sending out a newsletter email on my top recommendation to add to your dermal rolling routine. So you cleanse, dermal roll, copper peptide, soluble C, retinol, and then maybe one of the moisturizers I've recommended, like the 555 is great, the K-derma, the Supreme Lotion, the Recovery Balm, those are all excellent and the shield after dermal rolling to just make the skin feel a little bit more moisturized. Because if you roll and just do the copper peptide and soluble C, your skin's gonna feel like a little bit dry. And the other serums that are also really great for dermal rolling are the Focus Frown Serum and the Tripeptide Elixir. And FYI, if on my skin shop, anything is ever sold out, it's typically going to be back in stock in about a week or two. And I'm really fastidious about selling fresh products and most places aren't. So I do have products basically made to order and it's always fresh or as fresh as possible. So I do put that extra effort to make sure it's fresh. And sometimes products that I've worked with for a long time, for whatever reason, the manufacturer can't get an ingredient and it gets discontinued. Or if the manufacturer does a switch in their formula that I don't like, I literally pretty, <laughs> you know, pretty heartlessly give that product the boot. So if you go on my skin shop and you can't find a product you previously used, it means that I've 
intentionally gotten rid of it and just email me or book a 30 minute follow up if you're a one on one client, which you can book anytime. There's no charge for that because I offer ongoing support for all my one on ones. Then I'll make another recommendation um, in your custom skin collection list and we'll actually update that every time we have follow ups together. So that was a great question about vitamin C's to then segue into retinol. And the other thing that you can do to stimulate collagen is your at-home dermal rolling, but also in clinic laser skin rejuvenation. And one of the things that I will say is for a long time, I have sort of been waiting to see on some of the technology that is radio frequency and microneedling. And this tech has now been on the market for about six to seven years. And I, I do have a seven to eight year rule that I like a technology like a laser technology to be on the market for long enough so that we can see the long term outcomes. In my experience as a double board certified aesthetic nurse specialist since 2011, I've seen technologies come and go. And Fraxel is actually a really great example of a technology that was considered the best a long time ago, over a decade. It was considered like the holy grail for skin rejuvenation using a laser, using a fractionated laser, fractionated energy, hence the brand name of that technology, Fraxel. But what we actually saw long term was actually a damage to the skin. It actually made the skin thin and made it look like an eggshell and very white. It also, you could tell where the laser had gone. The skin was very smooth and pores were like literally melted. And then you could tell where it hadn't been. And so that's why I do like technologies to be on the market for a longer period of time and to see the clinical outcomes, the long-term outcomes on the general population, not just, oh, this is FDA approved for this, right? Okay, well, what happens when a technology comes into the aesthetic market is practitioners start using it. We actually saw this with Botox that started in the 90s that you know there were dosages then there were application areas and then there were tweaks to how it's applied the dosing all different all different types of things not to mention botox was actually reformulated and has been reformulated a number of times to reduce what's called complexing proteins in it and so then there's another version of um, botox called zealman that actually doesn't have those complexing proteins at all so these are examples of how products, whether it's an injectable product, a skincare ingredient product, or a laser technology, it takes time for these protocols and guidelines to be determined and sussed out. And then also, we saw this with cool sculpting as well, the initial, the initial sort of coming out of cool sculpting. And then a few years later, they redid the technology to make it shorter, more comfortable and, and better outcomes. So that's also a really well known example of an aesthetic rejuvenation technology for body contouring that has undergone different revisions of the technology itself. So that's why I really like to have the seven to eight year rule or so to um, just really critique and analyze the long-term outcomes because as with anything when anything comes out on the market there's often a lot of marketing dollars that goes into creating brand awareness and the best companies that i've worked with actually don't put as much money into their media and marketing they actually put more money into research and development and also education for practitioners to talk about what the tech does and to do it properly. So that's a little bit of a behind the scenes component in the plastic surgery medical aesthetics world is to never jump on the bandwagon of anything new because even with a certain injectables that were you know, permanent fillers, after about 15 years, there were huge class action lawsuits because of some of the issues with it. We actually saw that with, this actually ties into collagen, uh, the previous collagen injections that came from a cow source. And 
one of the cool things about fat transfer is that it's homologous. It comes from your body as opposed to from another animal. So there were a lot of issues seen with uh, hypersensitivities to injected bovine collagen for medical aesthetic outcomes. And I'm sure there's still practitioners that offer this type of product. I would say might be a little bit more prevalent in uh, Europe, Eastern Europe, and um, Dubai and UAE. Those, those areas are actually really on the cusp, but certain countries don't have as good regulations as others for ingredients in, say, injectables. So that's an example of you know, something that's really popularized, but it takes time for us to see the long-term outcomes of it. And so kind of a run around situation there for um, microneedling and then radiofrequency and microneedling. Yes, we are seeing some great outcomes with things to promote collagen, like with technologies, the tech can be really good. However, the tech who's doing it might not be very good. So there are there is this other nuance to laser skin rejuvenation for the purpose of promoting more collagen and elastin and reducing hyperpigmentation. We've seen the, la the era of the lazy laser technician. They just want to get you in. They just want to get you out. They want to see the next patient. I've never operated that way. And uh, I know a couple of you here know that, you know, I'm going to take my time with you and give you a really great service. And I've always done my best and never rushed uh, my appointments in the clinic. But lots of other clinics do because they want to meet that bottom line. And what we're actually seeing more and more of are more aesthetics clinics being bought by hedge funds and investors. And then they come in and change everything up. And it's not so much about the patient care. It actually, there's more of an emphasis on the bottom line and how much revenue that clinic's bringing in. And so what that can mean for you is you could go to a clinic and have great technology, but they're just like kind of doing a subpar rejuvenation treatment like they're not doing enough pulses they're not doing enough passes they're not going deep enough they're going too shallow things like that there's so many nuances with laser technologies for promoting collagen again the tech can be really good but it's actually about finding a provider that knows how to make that technology sing that knows how to get incredible results. And that happens actually through taking the time to analyze before and after photos and look at the recovery. So what's actually kind of cool is, yes, we saw Fraxel, which was the best 10 years ago, but then we saw the long-term impact. So if any of you have had a couple of Fraxels, that's, that's okay. It's, I, I don't see like damage with like a couple, but when I've seen people have like six of them, their skin is just not looking normal and there can be some ways to thicken up the skin again and hopefully promote more collagen. So the way that we promote collagen in the skin is either with a needle, so say with dermal rolling, where you have the needle actually coming into the skin like this and it's kind of creating like this little triangle and you actually get a basically a triangle in the skin from the needle and it's going deep enough to access the fibroblasts to then tell the fibroblasts to make more collagen and elastin. It, the needle can also impact the uh, melanocytes. And depending on what you're putting on after dermal rolling for brightening the skin, it has some really great skin brightening products to use with dermal rolling. It's the Melifade system. It's like a two, two A and B that you can actually apply after dermal rolling for brightening. Things like lactic acid and copper peptides, those are great for brightening the skin too, as well as even not doing dermal rolling, but applying a hydroquinone in a lower percentage for no longer than six months is pretty well regarded as a great way to brighten the skin. While we're talking about skin brightening, just for a second, then we're going to go back into how the different lasers actually stimulate collagen, what the mechanism of action is. The brightening formula 
on my skin shop. This is a skin supplement, nutraceutical, that's been on the market for about 20 years now, very well researched. If you're dealing with things like melasma, it's actually going to help from the inside out to reduce that overproduction and those little kind of pockets and clusters of melanin in the skin. So when we get sort of like a patch of pigmentation on the temple, around the eyes, the upper cheek, the body isn't getting rid of that buildup of melanin effectively. So you can actually take different things and different enzymes and nutrients to actually support the body in, in literally from the inside uh, eating that excess buildup of melanin in the skin. So that's the brightening formula that you can find on my skin shop. I've been working with that product since 2011. And then that same company also created the dermal formula, which is a lot of those same actives in the brightening formula with other things and omegas. So that's why it's a little bit more expensive. The dermal formula is a little bit more expensive. The dermal anti-aging formula on my skin shop than the brightening formula because there's more in it. But if you are dealing with pigmentation concerns, especially in the more sunny months of the year. And let me know in the chat, Deborah, I'm so happy you are back on this beautiful island. Yeah. And the small island girl through and through, that's for sure. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it's good for me to get out of the island for a little bit and get into the, the bigger cities and see more of the world and, you know, what's happening in the longevity and medical aesthetics innovation space. Uh, that's why I like South Florida. It's such a hub for that. So if you're having pigmentation concerns, I love to recommend the brightening formula or the anti-aging dermal formula. Those are two supplements that you could basically be on for the rest of your life. They contain superoxide dismutase. So th this is also a little nuance here that I'm just going to spend a little bit of time on is if you consume a supplement like collagen, like protein, like superoxide dismutase in particular, sometimes these molecules are a little bit fragile when they enter the stomach and the stomach acids. The stomach contains hydrochloric acid. Actually, your mouth physically master macerates and breaks down food and then it goes down your esophagus to your stomach and then the stomach acids then do like a chemical breakdown of the food and then it enters your small intestine and large intestine where then those nutrients are absorbed. So with the brightening formula and the anti-aging dermal formula, the SOD molecule is encapsulated in a very small amount of gluten and that amount of gluten is actually well below the daily allowable limit for celiacs. Celiacs have quite an autoimmune response to gluten. And so even if you are celiac, this is well below the daily allowable limit of gluten to have. But basically the superoxide dismutase molecule is encapsulated in a very small amount of gluten so that it doesn't break down in the stomach. And this is where formulation and research comes into play, not just a skincare product or a hair, skin, nail supplement that says it's going to do this, 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 this. What's actually the clinical and observable outcomes? And with those two products, you should start to see changes in your skin in as little as four weeks. And I've actually done studies on these products too, to validate that. And I just about fell over when I actually saw the results in just four weeks from those two skin supplements. So next thing I wanted to talk about was how lasers stimulate collagen. So lasers is a very broad term. And laser stands for light amplification. It's basically light that's amplified and then applied. And the form of that light has a target. So if it's IPL, that target's going to be red or brown. Intense pulse light, great for pigmentation. Not all IPL lasers are created equally. However, these light wavelengths have actually been shown to tell the skin cells to behave younger and rejuvenate the skin in general, not just reducing pigmentation because the light is attracted to pigment. Reds, browns, right? So uh, broken capillaries, redness to the cheeks, brown spots, um, dark hairs, right? You can get hair removal with it. But it also has a skin rejuvenation quality as well. 
Then there's other forms of lasers where the target is actually water. And when the target is water, that's really interesting because these are basically columns of injury into the skin. So that column of laser directed energy into the skin actually creates a small wound. It creates like this micro wound. And then that tells your fibroblasts to get to work to create more collagen and elastin. And back in the day, CO2 lasers uh, would do that, but they would basically, instead of selective collagen, instead of selective laser beams, it was just, you know, taking a bulldozer to the skin and taking that whole top layer off. And you have a huge wound for about a month on the area that was impacted. And that was done primarily more with blepharoplasties or eyelid surgeries or facelifts and full field CO2s have really fallen out of favor and they've gone into more of this fractionated approach. So that's how uh, lasers and needles create more collagen and elastin because they create a little bit of a micro injury and tell your fibroblasts to get to work to make more collagen and elastin. But you're not going to make great collagen and elastin if you're not consuming collagen and giving your body those nutrients that they need to actually make what you want it to make. Rachel, have you heard of the pen stamper device for microneedling? If so, what do you think about it? Great question. Actually, when I talk about dermal rolling, I actually, in my demonstration, also show using a stamper. And the, the dermal rollers and stampers that I have on my skin shop are the ones that I trust. They've been used for decades, but there's always new ones coming out. And some of these newer stampers, they actually have hollow needles, which the long-term study on a hollow needle isn't there. And then they have like this vial to, um, you know, the hollow needle goes into the skin and creates a channel and then the serum goes in. That's actually not as well researched at all. And you've probably been seeing this um, stamping device for microneedling on your social media. You've probably been advertised for it because you, you follow me and you're interested in the skin. So I actually love hearing about these different things. Uh, that one, no, I have not heard of. So that's what makes me think it's kind of really new. And again, I don't love a lot of the stampers and the microneedling tools that are online because most of them are a heavy metal alloy as opposed to a titanium or a surgical steel. They're like a mix of metals. And with the needles uh, up close in really subpar microneedling and stamper products, they can actually be blades, not needles, and they can be prone to rusting. And actually, I've even seen it uh, locally here, not from one of the rollers that, that I've worked with, but someone purchased something online. And actually, the needle came out of the microneedling technology that they bought, and it had to be like surgically removed. So the quality really does matter for these things. So anything that's brand new, I'm going to hit pause. But in my dermal rolling tutorial, I show you how to dermal roll your face, eyelids, lips, neck, chest, hands. And then I also show you how to do stamping around the delicate eye area, the corners of the nose, and also the hairline as well. So stamping and dermal rolling, I do like both of them, but it's what you're using with it and the tool that you're using that really does matter. Delilah, hi, what do you think of the supplement Spermidine for anti-aging? Yes, this is great. I do love Spermidine. The company that I really like is Primidine from Oxford Health. And I believe her name is Leslie. And she makes a great product. I actually take that Spermidine for anti-aging almost daily myself in the capsule form. And they actually have some really great before and after photos on their Primidine product, which is Spermidine. It actually comes from like this not very tasty fermented food in Asia. And it's basically put in a capsule, so it's easier to take. But they have incredible before and after results on gray hair. So people that were um, basically full gray, they started to take Spermidine and they had darker hairs coming through. I think that's incredible. They literally have like gray hair and then their roots are darker. You know, this just, I think, speaks volumes to 
you know, what happens when even our hair, when we're not getting enough nutrients, the quality of our hair is, is really, really key. So yes, I do like spermidine and that's actually going to be on my biohacking page as well. I've been taking it for quite some time now and I really like it. All my favorite things are on my biohacking page that are basically products I don't sell like biohacking tools or different companies that I have uh, showcased on the show here, the school of radiance podcast. And then for the products that I sell, like skincare, hair care, hair, skin, nail supplements, dermal rolling tools, grooming supplies, those are all on my skin shop. And also I'd love to hear from you. How many of you have signed up for my radiant rewards program? So this is very exciting because the radiant rewards program will actually give you 10% off after you've um, spent a certain amount. And it's really easy to access that. All you do is go to my skin shop and then go to the login page, make an account, and then you can track your orders that way too, which is great. You can then also make a favorites list of what to get next time. And then the little green button on my skin shop is where you register for my Radiant Rewards. It's brand new. So register now so that you will actually start to gain points on all of your future orders. Very exciting. Very happy to roll that out as a thank you for each and every one of you for joining me here on the show, being one-on-one -on -one clients of mine, taking my skin tutorials, joining the School of Radiance membership, which is where I go really deep into, you know, beyond the skincare products, hair, skin, nail supplements, dermal rolling tools, rejuvenation options. That's all one-on-one -on -one stuff. The skin tutorials is how to use your products and become your own skin pro in seven weeks. And then the membership is where I do a much deeper dive on ways to truly cultivate radiance and a lot of the behind the scenes things that I do to support my body, to maintain a healthy body composition, to sleep great, to have excellent relationships, to love life, not just be on autopilot, but really truly be a radiant human, which goes beyond just looking good. It's your energy. It's the way that you speak. It's the way that you present. It's the way that you enter a room and leave an impression. So very valuable information in the membership for enhancing both you personally and professionally and also in your your relationships as well delilah thank you for all you do my absolute pleasure and i had a, a comment a while back on the show and I, I would just like to address it i interview a lot of really incredible knowledgeable people and when one to two percent of people online are creating the content that's actually the statistic of all the people on social media only about one to two percent of the content you consume from different speakers like myself or people that are selling products and have companies that's only one to two percent of the people who are actually online are creating content that you love to learn from it's very valuable to you and for me to actually show up and have this show, I pay for my software, I pay for my microphones, you know, I have someone who helps me, shout out Erica, I love you. And, you know, there's lots of things behind the scenes that actually do cost money. So it's very rare and I would say actually pretty much impossible for someone to just be showing up creating content online and not have anything to offer you to support you because that's really important for you to know. So not thinking about, you know, going online and listening to podcasts and shows as, Oh, this person's just trying to sell you something. Well, yes, of course they've created something like spermidine, for example, from Oxford health span. Um, yes, she has a product to support you and help you. And then also uh, passion, passionate about sharing educational information to you know, help more people hear about the incredible product that she's made. So when you're listening to people and they're offering ways to support you, whether it's through products or through one-on-ones or group coaching, it's not about, oh, okay, they're just trying to sell me something. Well, think about this. How unfair would it be to you listening to expect to get, you know, 10 plus years of information that's in somebody's brain 
all of that for free. Think about the energy that it takes for someone to relay that information to you. It, it takes energy for me to show up and create content and share really high value uh, expert level skin information and longevity information, you know, the, the amount of schooling that I've paid for over the years, right? So if you're kind of like, oh, they're just trying to sell me something, I want you to actually catch yourself because this is where it comes into sending and receiving. If you're constantly getting from something or someone, that's a one way street. That's a one way street that's actually not balanced. There are going to be ways for you to then support that person over here who's doing really great things and sharing really high value information to help you live better and look better. That's a more fair exchange, the sending and receiving, as opposed to just, you know, expecting to take, 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 and then, you know, piecemeal all that stuff together. So it's just something I wanted to, to share. And let me know uh, if you have any closing questions here. We're going to wrap up soon. And this was really exciting. This is a really exciting class for me to record, especially after having done my paper on nutrition and the skin and basically creating guidelines because the way I look at nutrition is I, I, medical aesthetics, it's elective, right? We can choose to spend a little extra money and time learning about different skincare options and at-home options and rejuvenation options and supplements. We, we take our own time to learn and then purchase products to support us in that journey. And then there's also the in-clinic stuff as well. And when I was writing that paper, I came up with this term because medical aesthetics, it's, it's elective. We choose to look after our skin, which is the largest organ of the body to improve our confidence, and look our best, and feel our best and present as our most put together healthiest cells balanced selves. And then there's also this thing that I consider aesthetic nutrition. So I kind of came up with that term while I was writing this paper, aesthetic nutrition. Now you're going to hear everybody talking about this now that I've let the cat, cat out of the bag on this, on this phrase that I came up with, aesthetic nutrition. And what I think we're going to see more and more of in the clinic setting are more practitioners actually sharing this type of information and why it's beneficial to medical aesthetics practitioners to start to learn about what actually ages us, which is anti-nutrients, nutrient deficiency, leading to then inflammation, and also environmental stressors, which create inflammation, which was my last paper on oxidative stress status and its impacts on skin aging. We're, I think we're going to be seeing more clinics across the world integrating more of the integrative functional and longevity and biohacking side of things. And I spoke at an event in Hollywood uh, about a month ago, and it was biohack your beauty event. And you know, some of the top plastic surgeons were there. Some of my favorite health speakers were there as well. So we're seeing this coming together, which is why I really like where South Florida is because a lot of the medical aesthetics clinics there also integrate biohacking longevity. Um, things like IV drips for NAD have also become very popular in medical aesthetics clinics. So we're starting to see this. We're starting to see this encompassing of medical aesthetic rejuvenation with aesthetic nutrition. And why I think that's really important to shift towards is to actually get better rejuvenation outcomes. You're going to have more powerful rejuvenation outcomes when your oxidative stress status and your inflammation is lowered. You're eating the right foods. You are not deficient in nutrients. You're consuming enough collagen so that when you're taking the time to invest in things like at-home dermal rolling, at-home skincare, and then in-clinic rejuvenation, you're going to get more powerful rejuvenation outcomes and then in the process, by making sure that more of us aren't nutrient deficient, hopefully we can start to see that skyrocketing, doubling year over year of deaths of unknown cause from autoimmune conditions. And also and that statistic also encompasses people who passed away prior to having a diagnosis. I'd like to see that number come down because it is a signal as a researcher, doubling year over year is huge. Like we have cancer, cardiovascular disease, and then deaths of unknown cause is, is really creeping up there. And 
that's why the whole skin stuff, what your skin's telling you actually isn't as superficial as you might think. It actually goes way beyond just the superficial because your skin's telling you that something's going on. If you have red skin, if you have dry skin, if you're noticing aging overnight, especially in perimenopause, menopause, and postmenopause, if you have redness and puffiness and darkness to your eyes, changes with your hair, changes with your nails and your body composition, our visual of ourselves tells us so much about our cells. So that's why I love to take this approach of how internally we can support ourselves to look our best and feel our best. And then in the process, your skin will keep showing you and actually your sleep. When you're tracking your sleep as well, things that you're doing, it's going to give you, you know, a 1% improvement in your sleep, a 2% improvement, and then even a greater improvement like sleeping in EMF clothing is really key. Lisa, hey, Lisa, one-on-one -on -one client here. Should we put the same actives we use on our face after normal rolling on our hands, elbows, and knees? Yes, love that. Uh, actually, I have a whole session that I'm teaching tomorrow in my skin tutorials on things like peels for the face, for the body. And there are some different products that I do want to recommend you use for the body um, that are going to be like a little bit less expensive than the products you're using on the high real estate areas, like your face, eyelids, lips, neck, chest, and hands. There are some specific body products like the Dermalac, like the ac &E body oil. Those are some of my two favorite products to use on the body, especially this time of year when we're showing more skin. I also really like the Bright and Clear Solution. I actually put that on my face, neck, chest, hands today, underneath my eye cream, my moisturizer, my sunscreen, and my makeup. And I also really like the Bright and Clear Solution for the body because it has lactic acid. And so it's an exfoliant, but it's also a moisturizer and helps with pigment. So should you put the same actives that you use on your face. So that's going to be after dermal rolling, the copper peptide and the vitamin C soluble C product after you've done dermal rolling. Yes, you can do that on the hands, elbows and knees. However, with the body lactic acid product, you actually want to put that one on first. And if you go to my skin shop and look at the different products that I offer you that are all pre vetted by me, I actually have a really great description on how to use that product that I've actually written myself to provide just yet another resource to support you. So if you look on my skin shop body, you're going to see some body care products and I have those uh, tips actually written out, but I do a deep dive holding your hand and making it really easy to sort of understand and employ and through a tutorial how to actually use these products. So that's the benefit of my tutorials. So let me know any questions that are here. And as a bonus for all of you who have joined me live, if I have met with you, if I haven't met with you, I would love to offer this. Um, let's, let's just kind of get to know each other. And I'd love to extend this to you. Uh, there's no charge with this link to connect with me. This is exclusive to you being here on this live recording of the masterclass. So if we haven't yet connected, click the link in the chat, click it right now because we're going to close this quickly. Click that link and that's going to give you access to um, just like a, a meet and greet, a check-in appointment. And um, this is also great if you're a one-on-one -on -one client of mine, which a lot of you here are, to just have a follow-up because I always have new things that I'm I'm always updating rather, always updating and advancing. So let me know after you've clicked that link in the chat, it's open in your browser because as soon as I close this live stream, that's going to go away. So that is a beautiful, lovely, extra, extra gift for you joining me here live here. And as always, I'm here to support you here on the show. I'm going to be creating more solo content. I had a, you know, an issue with one of my microphones. And when you have a podcast, you have to keep your audio quality uh, steady. So you might have noticed some crackling in previous episodes. My apology, my microphone was failing and I had to splurge and get a new one. And again, you know, when you hear people online, there's there's all these other things that you don't think about that that uh, we take care of behind the scenes to get this information to you. So let me know after you've clicked that link and would love to connect with some new names here 
and also those who I have supported and are looking for, you know, what you what can you do next, right? What would be a great next step for you? Or seasonally, if there's any adjustments that we need to make, I always offer this to my one-on-one -on -one clients, there's no extra charge to keep you on track and also give you those updates towards continuing to get better um, results over time because things are always advancing in the medical aesthetics and the skin space. And if you are a practitioner like Rachel, I would also love to connect with you. If you're a practitioner, go ahead and send me an email info at theschoolofradiance.com. I love to teach other practitioners how to actually employ these strategies and consultations and you know, uh, give consulting on which technologies to actually bring into their clinic and actually train. So I have been doing rejuvenation training now since, oh gosh, I'd say 2016, 2017. I'm actually hired by some uh, pretty big companies out there to teach regularly, which is also one of the benefits of me being back here on the island is doing uh, more teaching. Deborah, hey Deborah, click, need to get back on track with dermal rolling products, happy to help you. Lisa just booked, oh, I'm so happy to see you again. Yes, um, so announcements, I'm gonna be making a new recommendation for the dermal rolling retinol coming soon. I'm gonna be sending that out on a newsletter. And if you're not yet on my newsletter, if you're listening to the replay of this, just go to theschoolofradiance.com and actually go to the freebies tab and you can check out my free 30 minute lesson on slowing aging and some of my research that I've done there. And yeah, you'll just see the sign up form for my newsletter on my skin shop on my website. And that way you're gonna get invitations to live events like these and updates for different things as well that I only share on the newsletter. All right, cool, just booked. And also let me know in the chat who has registered for their Radiant Rewards so that you are getting points so that you can save on future orders. Again, I'm just so grateful for each and every one of you here. This is what I do for work is uh, educating and sharing this information to support you. And just I'm so grateful for each and every one of you here that this is just a great way for me to get back with the Radiant Rewards program so that when you purchase products and you've signed up, you can accumulate points. So you just wanna make sure you've logged into my skin shop, click that little green button and get started on receiving your Radiant Rewards. So that's really new. It's not gonna to apply to past orders. It's gonna to apply to future orders. And it's always, you know, Happy to share my gratitude for each and every one of you. And you pretty much all stayed on the whole time. We went 20 minutes over here. And so this just really speaks to all your dedication. And looking after your skin is not as superficial as you might think. And also when you learn these things about looking after your skin, consuming collagen, eating the right foods, getting the right nutrients, reducing oxidative stress, not only do you benefit from this, your whole family benefits from this. And actually from a, a feminine perspective, this is actually one of the key roles of the woman is to kind of be like the healer in the, the family and some other things as well. We're not gonna deep dive on that. That's a little bit more of membership stuff where I talk about balancing the masculine and feminine and detoxing and communication and having balanced relationships and all that cool stuff. Julie, hey, Julie, thank you for your generous bonus. We'll book today, perfect. So just make sure you click that link because it's gonna go away as soon as we end this call and just put it back there. Yeah, like I said, just so grateful that you're here. You're learning this information. It's no mistake. This is a very high level skin information. One of the things I will say, just kind of like a caution is I see a lot of influencers talking about skin stuff and the skin stuff isn't their niche. So the reason that I've decided to, you know, really get into the biohacking side of things back in 20, oh gosh, 15 or so, 2016, I met Dave Asprey. I basically got his face ready for his superhuman book cover. Um, that was, I think I met him in 2012, 2013. We've actually become good friends. And He's actually who really clued me into this stuff. So I've been practicing the biohacking stuff for a long time and then actively researched it 
And so that's why I'm really comfortable talking about reducing oxidative stress and inflammation. And I'm actually one of the leaders, actually, who's been one of the first, so I've been told, to blend beautification and biohacking together. And now we're seeing it become more mainstream, which is, I think, great for everybody. A rising tide lifts all boats. I'm not about to keep this information to myself. I'd rather see more people like you getting the benefits of investing your time in skincare and rejuvenation and getting the best results possible with the lifestyle things that you're doing as well. So it's, it's 